let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Uh, finally, I found a use for Kia's V2D, and this is the new Kia Niro EV. And let's get warm, let's get warm, let's get warm. I'll just turn it off for now because it's a bit loud. Let me start by clarifying what used to be called V2L, vehicle to load, was so incompre incomprehensible that Kia decided to rename it to V2D, vehicle to device. With a special adapter, you can power devices up to three kilowatts. This heater, which by the way, I'm not supposed to use outdoors, but I didn't have anything better on hand, draws up to two kilowatts. And I'm finally not going to freeze on set. Believe me, after a few hours standing outside, neither down jackets nor thermal underwear help. You have to keep moving or warm up in the car, and I suggest the latter. Oh, oh who's got the key for this thing? Oh, bugger. I showed you the new Kia Niro a few months ago when I attended the launch event of all three powertrain versions, hybrid, plug-in hybrid and EV. Back then I mainly drove the regular hybrid, today it's time for the electric variant. The key changes are in the design. The Kia Niro is slightly larger than the model it replaces. It's 2.5cm wider, the wheelbase has lengthened by 2cm and the whole car is 6.5cm longer. There is a silver line running across the front above the headlights. The EV has no grille as such, only a modest air intake at the bottom of the bumper to cool down the electric motor. The headlights on the Nero have LED daytime running lights, which are shaped like an ECG or heartbeat diagram, at least that's Kia's official interpretation. The ECG motif also appears on the bottom of the rear bumper by the fog lights and the turn signals. The rear lamps, meanwhile, are boomerang shaped. On the side, the biggest novelty are the optional contrasting panels on the C pillars, air flows behind them and this is supposed to improve aerodynamics. Inside there is many elements we've seen in the Sorento, the Sportage, the EV6, like the digital instrument cluster or the two-spoke steering wheel or this display panel which either displays media or AC down here. Then there are USB ports, a phone cubby, uh, your uh, cup holders, a storage shelf and some storage here, there. It all looks familiar. Everything here looks vaguely familiar, as do the seats. We saw this type of seats in the Kia EV6. Interestingly, the lounge mode is only for the passenger. I thought that the driver would be waiting to charge and they would use it more, but perhaps the market has verified this idea. Speaking of waiting by the charger, not much has changed from the previous generation, i.e. the 64.8 kWh battery is just 8 tenths of a kWh larger. This difference is probably due to use of batteries from a different manufacturer rather than a planned major change. Another incremental change is the charging speed. The first generation Nero took a maximum of 77 kW and even that peak was for a short time. At around 60% state of charge, the car charged below 60 kilowatts, and above 80%, it dropped to around 20 kilowatts. It's not much better now, the peak is just over 80 kilowatts, and the charging curve looks just as bad. Let me quickly address the V2D issue I started with. Don't worry, you won't get stranded because you cannot discharge the battery completely. In the menu you can set the minimum state of charge below which the external power supply ends. You can also completely disable V2D so you don't have to worry about some prankster with a V2D adapter stealing your juice.
To sum up the charging business, from 10 to 80% state of charge, you charge for 33 minutes under optimal conditions, which is 10-15 minutes longer than the current standard. A few years ago, when there wasn't much choice in the EV segment and the state of infrastructure was less advanced, let's call it, than it is today, the Kia e-Niro and e-Soul were very interesting propositions. However, today, in late 2022 or early 2023, it feels like Kia is quietly pushing its customers towards the EV6, which is not much more expensive, but offers much better tech. And at this point, I would like to point out, I understand that electric car is charged mainly slowly at home or at the office, and the Kia EV, sorry, the Kia Niro EV, can take up to 11 kilowatts from a Type 2 socket, so six hours and you're golden. With a range of up to 460 kilometers in the combined cycle, if you drive mainly around town, you'll recharge overnight more than you've used up during the day, and that's even from a regular home socket. Even with temperatures near freezing, when I couldn't get below 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and on the highway, when I was getting closer to 25 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, this is far from 16.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers Kia promises. Simply put, the electric Nero was and still is a car primarily for the city. With the above in mind, I compared several routes for the Kia Niro EV, Citroen EC4 and Nissan Ariya on a betterrouteplanner.com and it seems that even on the motorway the Niro EV performs only slightly worse than the Ariya and significantly better than the EC4. Of course, everything depends on the weather and the available chargers along the way. Here, it's worth adding that planning a route with charging in the navigation is not the easiest thing to do, i.e. it's nice that the car informs me that I won't get from, let's say, Warsaw to Berlin without charging, duh, but I would like to see a list of suggested stops for charging, which of course will be automatically modified on the fly during the trip. Unfortunately, this is not the case, so better plan longer trips on your own using external apps. In some scenarios, range can be extended with recuperation, the level of which can be controlled with the paddle shifters. 0, 1, 2, 3 and I pedal, which is one pedal driving, or auto, which means recuperation works based on a radar and adapts region strength to the situation on the road. Other than that, the Kia Niro EV is a very good car for daily commuting. The visibility is good, the interior is comfortable, there are heated seats, heated steering wheel and this test car also gets ventilated seats. Now, I will admit that I use the latter feature very rarely even in the summer, but I can't imagine buying a new car without a heated steering wheel. Getting in and out no problem, the driving position is good for me and Anna. I'm 175 centimeters tall and Anna is 160 centimeters tall and we both find a comfortable position without any problem. Well, not without any. Anna complains that the steering wheel obscures her view of the instrument cluster. The electrically adjustable driver's seat has two memory settings, just fine for us. The steering wheel has to be readjusted manually every time we switch the driver, but there is lumbar support adjustment for the driver. Also, compared to the hybrid version, here you sit a bit higher because the batteries are under the floor. Batteries under the floor have a minimal effect on ground clearance. The electric version has 15 centimeters of ground clearance, while the hybrid versions have 16 centimeters. But from the side, the battery hanging under the floor just looks odd. The driver assistance systems are extremely intrusive, especially the lane departure warning system, and this is independent of the active lane keeping assistance system. Everything keeps beeping and tries to correct the driver, and I don't like it. It's just better to roll slowly in traffic and avoid any sudden maneuvers. I also tested the 0 to 100 km per hour performance. Instead of promised 7.8 seconds, I managed to get only 8.7 seconds. It was dry, but the outside temperature during the speed runs was minus 5 degrees Celsius and the gauge on the dashboard showed that the car was not getting full power even in sport mode. There is plenty of legroom and headroom in the back. 
the side seats can be heated. USB ports are in the backs of the front seats. There is also an air vent and a 230 volt outlet. The seat splits 40-60 and there's an armrest with cup holders. But the door pockets are small. The doors open wide, giving good access for installing child seats. Before we look inside the boot, a few words about the model name. The previous generation was called the e Nero, but it seems that people searched online for Kia Nero EV, hence Kia Nero EV. Or should I say, Kim Kian. Apparently, some people find the new Kia logo confusing. Do you? Let me know in the comment section below. See? Looks like an N. For the first time in the Nero, there is an electrically operated tailgate. It can open automatically, but instead of swinging your foot under the bumper, you just approach from the back and the tailgate starts opening. I'm not a fan of this solution as I prefer to initiate opening of the boot myself. The electric Kia Nero has the largest boot, 475 liters, and another 20 liter frunk. The hybrid has 450 liters, and the PHEV has only 343 liters. With the backrest folded, the regular hybrid has the largest boot. 1445 liters, while the PHEV has the smallest 1342. The EV in two seat configuration has 1392 liters of cargo space. The floor can be dropped The hybrid can be specified with a mini spare. The EV and the plug-in hybrid only have a repair kit. I like the soft folding cargo cover. It's the same like on the Toyota Yaris Cross, among others. Prices of the Kia Niro EV start at 47,590 euro, not including any local incentives. For comparison, the Citroen EC4 starts at 36,000 euro, and the Nissan Ariya starts at 47,490, although realistically you'll be looking at the 87 kilowatt hour battery model, which starts at 63 and a half grand. This test Kia Niro EV with options costs 53,690 euro. If the Kia Niro EV charged faster or at least had better route planning, I'd recommend it in a heartbeat as an EV all-rounder. However, in its current form, it's a compromise. And what do you think about the Kia Niro EV? Let me know in the comment section below this video. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.